The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining the Board of Canadian Registered Safety Professionals for today's webinar. Presenting today's webinar, uh, we have Kevin Dawson. Uh, Kevin is the chair of the BCRSP Governing Board and is also the chair of the Qualifications Review Committee. And myself, Nikki Wright, I am the Executive Director of the BCRSP. To participate, you can move your mouse over the grab tab, which is outlined on the screen to open, by clicking the orange arrow, you can open and close your control panel. From the view menu, you can also set the control panel to not auto hide when, when inactive if you prefer to always keep it open. The audio pane provides audio information. By default, you have joined the webinar via mic and speakers. The, the, click audio setup to select your computer speaker or headset device. If you prefer, you can join via telephone by selecting use telephone and the dial-in information will be displayed, including an audio pin. If you would like to ask any questions by, by phone, you must enter your audio pin so that your line may be able to be unmuted. There will be opportunities for questions at the end of the webinar. You may ask questions via the text box that appears on your screen, or if you are dialed in and have a microphone, if you want to ask questions uh, verbally, if you click the hand icon, on the GoToMeeting display, and then I will acknowledge you in turn and unmute your line so you can ask your question. On today's agenda, we will cover a brief overview of the BCRSP and of the certification processes. We will review how to complete your CRSP application and offer some tips and pointers on the documentation and detail required for your application to be assessed. We will also provide an overview of the, the new CRST requirements. And at the end of the presentation, as I've stated, there will be time for questions. The BCRSP was incorporated in 1976 and is a national public interest certification body. We are governed by a board consisting of CRSPs and one elected public member. And we are the only occupational health and safety certification organization in Canada accredited to ISO 17024 personal certification bodies and ISO 9001 quality management systems. Our vision is for safe and healthy workplaces through certification. And our mission is that the Board of Canadian Registered Safety Professionals sets certification standards for occupational health and safety professionals. The CRSP designation has become widely recognized as a national standard of certification for OHS generalists. Sorry, double click there. And now Good afternoon, I'll pass it everybody. Okay, uh, what you'll see on your screen right now is the, the uh, blueprint domains for the current uh, CRSP examination. This blueprint came into effect in 2015. The blueprint was developed to guide those involved in the development of the CRSP examination and to provide the public with practical information about the examination itself. The Domain areas, which you see on the screen, and the full blueprint document, which is available on the BCRSP website, outline the competencies required of a CRSP. The blueprint is updated at least once every five years. The examination for CRSP is based on the nine domains outlined in the blueprint and consists of between 190 and 210 operational multiple choice questions. The multiple choice questions of the CRSP exam are presented in one of two formats, either a case-based question, which is a set of questions associated with a scenario, or 
independent questions, questions which stand alone by themselves and can be answered just from the information contained in the question. The standard or pass mark for the examination is set in reference to the content and difficulty of each examination test form. The standard is set by a panel of content experts from across Canada who work closely with the board's uh, examination uh, consultant, AS, Yardstick ASI Incorporated, to ensure that the examination meets all of the blueprint guidelines and also is statistically valid. Now I'm going to describe the certification process itself. The certification process is outlined on the screen there. The first step is to submit an application. The application form and other required supporting forms are available on the BCRSP website. Please note that the application fee is due at the time of application and is non-refundable regardless of the, evalu of the evaluation outcome. Applications are reviewed at set deadlines. Again, check the CRSP website for the exact dates. The Qualifications Review Committee is the group that is tasked with reviewing all applications. A, quali a Qualifications Review Committee reviewer will evaluate all of the material presented by an applicant and establish that all documentation required is present. In other words, to ensure that there's an application form, the supporting documentation, the reference questionnaire, and the practice questionnaire, and any professional practice experience forms. The reviewer will then conduct an assessment of the application. At this stage, an application may be approved to proceed to the next step. It may be deferred because it requires either additional documentation or some more uh, information. There is a question about some particular piece of information. Or it may be denied as not being meeting the basic eligibility criteria. If the application is approved to proceed, it may move to another step called the Regional Screening Center for an interview. This peer review is a verification of the initial assessment done by the QRC. Interviewer, interviews are not necessarily carried out for all application. However, a minimum number of applicants are selected for interview uh, 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 following each qualification review period for the purposes of random audit and quality control. Their interviews are also used to verify specific information in special circumstances or in the case of an appeal. At the interview, an applicant should be prepared to answer questions regarding the professional practice information provided in the application in their application package. At this stage, an application may be approved to proceed to the examination, deferred as requiring more information or more review, or also denied as not meeting the criteria. If you are approved to proceed to the examination, the examination is administered three times, three times a year, in February, June, and October. The multiple choice examination is delivered via computer uh, based testing at Pearson View testing centers. Upon successful completion of the examination, the qualification review committee will recommend a successful candidate to the governing board for approval. Once the governing board has approved the recommended candidate and the candidate has returned all applicable fees 
and a signed slash witnessed copy of the Code of Professional Conduct to the BCRSP office, the governing board will confirm the CRSP designation. Once you have obtained a CRSP designation, annual renew renewal and participation in the board's uh, continuous professional development process are mandatory to maintain the certification. A complete review of this process can be found in greater detail in the CRSP Candidate Handbook, which is available on the CRSP website. Thanks, Kevin. Now I will review the CRSP eligibility criteria. The current eligibility criteria is as follows. Applications for the CRSP certification are required to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree four years in any field or a two-year diploma or certificate in occupational health and safety from a recognized academic institution. The two-year diploma must meet the education standard of a minimum of 900 hours or 60 credits. And you must have at least four years of experience where within the last five years where occupational health and safety is at least 50% preventative at a professional level with breadth and depth of health and safety duties. <clears throat> Two references are required to be completed and must be returned to the BCRSP office by the person completing them via mail, fax, or email. The professional practice questionnaire is to be completed by your manager. The professional reference questionnaire can be completed by a work colleague that knows you well enough in order to answer the questions on the reference form. The two questionnaires may not be completed by the same person. And please note that the BCRSP may contact your reference directly for more information or clarification. And one of those two references must be completed by a CRSP or equivalent. Uh, examples of equivalents at this stage are identified as CMIOSH, CSP, Professional Engineer, a CIH, Certified Human Resource Professional, or another professional who is who is who holds a provincial license to practice um, as a professional, um, similar to an engineering license. <clears throat> to, rec to qualify for the CRSP, just to dive in on the education criteria, um, <clears throat> as we've said, you must have a four-year bachelor degree in a field, in any field, or the two-year 900-hour or 60-credit diploma or certificate in occupational health and safety. If uh, you are looking at occupational health and safety education and wondering if you uh, it what you're looking at qualifies. We do have a list of programs available on the BCRSP website that we have currently reviewed and approved for uh, CRSP um, eligibility requirements. Any applicant who has completed formal education above the minimum requirement, for instance, if you have a master's degree or a doctorate, uh, you do meet the formal education requirements for certification. For your formal education to be accepted, your academic institution must issue us a final transcript. This transcript must be received by us in the original envelope sealed by the college or university bearing the registrar's stamp or mark. Transcripts that have been opened, photocopied, or scanned will not be accepted. Applicants without formal academic training in occupational health and safety must also provide objective evidence of their OHS-related professional development. This professional development training should be under the supervision of an appropriate instructor through a structured learning program that includes evaluation of participants' achievement of learning objectives. The ideal professional development would be completion of a, a OHS certificate. However, however, other professional development may be acceptable, such as extensive training that one would, one would undertake as a WorkSafe or Ministry of Labor OHS enforcement officer 
or other combinations of professional development. As a benchmark, applicants should aim to demonstrate that their professional development activities cover at least seven of the nine domains listed in the CRSP examination blueprint. And now Kevin will go through the professional practice requirements. Now, th this is the professional practice requirements. In other words, the 48 months of continuous professional practice within the last 60 months. Documentation required is as follows. For each position that you are seeking to be, have approved for a credit, you need to complete a professional practice experience form. You would also need to have a copy of the job description for that particular uh, position on company letterhead, which clearly identifies the uh, roles and responsibilities for that position. And finally, you would need to have a signed verification of employment letter from uh, an appropriate individual within that company, so HR department or manager or supervisor, for example, on company letterhead, which would verify and, and um, verify the dates of employment and the position that you had in that uh, with that particular company. Gaps in employment due to parental leave, long-term disability, medical leave, returning to school, unemployment, etc., do not negate the full-time requirement. You can have actually, because of the way it's structured, you could have up to a maximum of 12 months uh, that would uh, uh, be allowed within that, that uh, 48 months. So uh, the requirement is 48 months within the last 60. So that allows for short periods of, uh, or actually short or longer for that matter, but not more than 12 months uh gaps in in uh, employment anything outside of this may be appropriate or may be accepted however it would have to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis so what do we do with the professional practice experience form the qualifications review review committee reviewer will evaluate each job description using the following criteria to determine whether or not it meets our requirement for, for professional OHS practice. Failure on any one of these points means the position is not acceptable. First of all, the position must be full time. The professional OHS function must be at least 50% or more of the position duties. The position must be at a professional level and will Describe that a little bit more in detail later. The position must have a broad scope of duties, preferably across the nine domains of the blueprint. And obviously, all of this must described, be described in the professional practice experience form that you submit asking for credit for that particular position. I should note that experience gained outside of Canada is accepted as long as you meet all of the other criteria. I've mentioned the word professional level. What do we mean by professional level practice? In essence, reviewers are expecting to see within the position description that the focus of activity that you do on a day-to-day -day basis is providing advice and support for the prevention and management of work-related fatalities, injuries and illnesses, property damage and associate, associated social and financial losses. We would, we would want to see that you are actually providing advice, that in, in other words, that you are acting in a, somewhat of a consulting role and not just as in a, in a, in a transactional uh, role. Examples would be to lead and support the development and implementation of a systems approach to occupational health and safety, to lead and support key influences, influencers such as managers and senior uh, executives, 
on strategies that would foster organizational culture that prioritizes OHS to participate and lead development of OHS risk management processes and facilitate and support the implementation and maintenance of them within an organization. To develop and lead processes for monitoring and measuring and evaluating OHS performances. For example, the OHS management system within your organization, an audit process, those kinds of things. Developing and implementing processes for knowledge collection and management to enable positive OHS outcomes. In other words, to improve the culture within your organization. We would also expect to see the position is actively required to communicate, engage with, and influence decision makers and other stakeholders within their organization towards the overall mitigation of risk and optimizing worker health and safety. Position descriptions for individuals who function at what we consider to be a professional level tend to focus on critical thinking and strategic activities rather than activities that are more transactional in nature. In other words, it is the individuals who actually develop the processes, develop the um, mitigation methods, as opposed to somebody who just um, carries out an inspection or carries out, uh, a, 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 for example, a, a, an incident report using a standardized or uh, company-wide process. These would be people, the professional level experience is the person that actually develops that process as opposed to the person that uses it. Applicants should also review the prospective certificates area of the BCRSP website for more information with respect to this. Thanks, Kevin. A note on our reciprocal agreements. Um, if you hold a valid CMIOSH from uh, the Institution of Occupational Safety and Health in the United Kingdom, or a CSP from the Board of Certified Safety Professionals, or a certified occupational health and safety professional or charter occupational health and safety professional credential from the Safety Institute of Australia, you can apply for your CRSP under a memorandum of understanding process. Information on this process and a special application form can be found on our website under the reciprocal agreements section. There are a few other requirements that you should be aware of. Um, once you become eligible for the CRSP examination, uh, you would have one year to complete your first examination writing. If a rewrite is required, candidates will have a one-year window from the time of first writing to rewrite the examination, and a maximum of three examin examination writings will be permitted. Now we'd like to talk a little bit about the new certification that's just coming into effect. It's it's not actually in place yet. We're not we're starting to take applications later this year. But the BCRSP is, has recognized that within the OHS practice in Canada, there are many individuals who don't necessarily function at the professional level, but more at the transactional level. And so we have developed a CRST certification. This certification is designed to a certain extent for um, entry-level safety practitioners and those who carry out the more transactional type activities within the safety process. We anticipate that we will begin accepting applications for CRST in the latter part of 2018, probably in September, October, with the first examination schedule for 2019. As with the CRSP, there is a blueprint has been developed uh, to help the design of the examination for CRST. The domain areas that you see on the screen will look, will look quite familiar because they are the same nine domains that would be uh, occupied for by the CRSP. 
as with the CRSP blueprint, the uh, the domain and the uh, blueprint domain and the competencies will be reviewed every five years. The CRST examination is currently in the process of development. And as I said earlier, we anticipate that the first uh, delivery of that particular exam will be in early 2019. The process for the CRST application is similar to that of CRSP in that you must submit an application with the required supporting documentation and the uh, application fee. Your application is then evaluated. However, there is no interview component with the CRST. If you are, if you are approved by the, or get through the assessment process, the application will, or the applicant can proceed directly to the CRST examination. There are three eligibility pathways for CRST. Pathway A requires that you have successfully completed a one-year OHS certificate program from a recognized educational institution and have at least one year of OHS experience where at least 35% of your activity and duties are directly associated with OHS duties. Pathway B is somewhat similar. In this case, you may have, as long as you have completed a two-year non-occupational health and safety uh, program of some sort from a regulation, uh, rec recognized institution, like a co community college or university, or if you are a qualified journey person in a trade, so you have a provincial certification as a journey person, for those individuals, you because you don't have formal OHS uh, training within your background, you must demonstrate that you have completed professional development courses or training related to the nine competency uh, categories before submitting your application. As with Pathway A, you must also have one year of OHS experience where at least 35% of your activity and duties is directly related to OHS. Finally, Pathway C. Pathway C will only be available to students from the approved two-year 900-hour OHS programs. Those students from those programs are, will be, become eligible to write the, the technician certification examination immediately upon graduation. And if successful, they would then hold the technician level certification. After four years of relevant and OHS experience at the professional level, they would then become eligible to apply for CRSP certification. Okay, and now we're just going to cover uh, some general application uh, points. Um, Kevin, I, I'll do this next slide. I know you were supposed to do it, but you have a lot coming up, so <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> Uh, so, if your education uh, was obtained outside of Canada, it must be evaluated by a Canadian credentialing agency and a copy of your original assessment provided to the BCRSP. Um, we, we do have a list of uh, some of the Canadian credentialing agencies, again, listed on our website for your information. And there is also a language requirement. If English or French is not your first language, i.e. is not the first language you learned at home as a child, you will need to provide evidence of adequate English or French to meet certification requirements unless you qualify for an exemption. You may qualify for an exemption from the English or French requirement if one of the following applies to you. Um, a, you have completed or are completing four or more years of full-time study at a recognized academic institution that teaches in English or French 
or you have completed or are completing four or more years of full-time study in an English or French language school located in a country where the dominant language is English or French. If you don't qualify for an exemption, uh, you would be required to submit evidence of an English or French language profici proficiency. Um, you can satisfy that requirement by completing one of the test qualifications um, that we list. Uh, as examples, it would be a minimum score of 94 to 101 on a test of English as a foreign language, otherwise known as TOEFL an IBTA band score of seven on the international language testing system, or a score of 785 to 900 on a test de Francais international. Equivalent proof of language profic proficiency, such as one performed by a university or a government agency would also be accepted. And these language assessments as required would be submitted as part of your application. The application fee is non-refundable and is due when you submit your application. It's fi currently $525 plus the applicable HST or GST, depending on your um, province that you are located in. Uh, applications must be submitted uh, in a typed format. We will not accept a handwritten application and we provide the application forms electronically in order to facilitate completion in that format. Applications must also be submitted either via Canada Post mail or courier uh, to the BCRSP office. Um, we will not accept an application by fax or via email. And remember that you should complete your application in its entirety, remembering to sign and date the declaration on the, the last page of the application form. And you're also required to submit two copies of the application form and one copy of supporting documentation. We do have some exciting news. Um, we are working on an online application platform that will be available later this year. Once the online goes live, uh, there will be no other method of application submission. Uh, we anticipate this will speed up the application processing times and allow for applicants to log in and track their progress of their application. We are looking for beta testers of this system, uh, and I've just launched a poll in, in the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, so if you can indicate your interest, if you're interested in piloting, you should be ready to apply uh, for certification within, I will say, the next four weeks. Um, so I'll, I'll just give a moment for that poll to run. And what we would be looking for you to provide us is feedback on the application process as you complete your application in the online format so we can make tweaks to the process before we launch it for everybody. So while the poll is running, I will um, move to the questions. 